Hi, I'm Dr. Pajari, host of The Prognosis, uh, which is a palliative podcast. And today we will be talking about what is hospice, questions pertaining to hospice. My guest today is Evelyn Perez Rivera, who's back for uh, more questions. So welcome and enjoy. The question, uh, the next question that we have is, what does the hospice benefit confer? Meaning, um, there are very specific things that hospice offers its patients. And a lot of times families are very surprised to hear that hospice uh, it, the, the way it's stated is such a rich benefit. It's something that you earn, uh, you know, by working or having Medicare or even Medicaid or an insurance in place. Um, mm-hmm. So let's talk about what hospice gives the patient um, specifically. So the model of hospice, as mentioned earlier, is an interdisciplinary team. So what does that mean? That they are different people in, from different disciplines providing the support for that patient. Who are they? Okay, so we have the nurse. Usually that is the case manager, um, the NRN. Uh, there is a CNA, and that CNA is so valuable to, uh, to the patients because that CNA will come out and help with the daily care of the patient. Um, he or she will come in uh, to the home or to wherever um, is hospice for this patient and assist uh, for about an hour, an hour and a half, just to do the, the basic hygiene. Uh, it may be tidying up around the bed, changing linen, uh, simple tasks like that. And I must say, we had a um, po- we have a podcast that is devoted to CNA care. So just to mention that too, that's wonderful because mm-hmm. they are they are an integral part of of the team. Mm-hmm. And many times, um, patients and families that are reluctant to buy into a hospice because of different myths. It is through that um, through that offering that we get them to try the service of hospice. Mm-hmm. So, so we mention a case manager or a, uh, a registered nurse, which is usually the case manager on the case. There is the CNA. There is a social worker at a master's level. Um, there is also a chaplain uh, for spiritual support, and I want to say in reference to um, chaplaincy, when families hear chaplain, they immediately tie them to religion. Mm-hmm. And, and that is not the case. Um, the hospice chaplain is a person that has studied divinity, but is also uh, very familiar with different faith and even um, atheism. So, um, again, meeting the patient wherever they are. Mm. Along with the benefits of hospice, so we mentioned the key disciplines that are there, Mm -hmm. but then there is more. There is the medications that Mm -hmm. are related to uh, the diagnosis of why you are in hospice. Uh, There is the equipment. uh, If the patient needs a hospital bed, uh, a wheelchair, a bedside commode, a shower chair, whatever. Even Uh, Hoyer lift. uh, uh, Even a Hoyer lift. Or like we said, non-invasive ventilation or, um, yeah, so a lot of equipment. A lot of equipment, Mm -hmm. a lot of equipment, oxygen. Mm -hmm. Um, So that is also included under um, the hospice benefit. Uh, Let me see what I'm missing. So there is the DME, that is called the Durable uh, uh, Medical Equipment. Uh, There is the staff. There is the medications. Um, Well, one thing I'd add on staff is physician oversight. (laughs) Yeah, without you, we would not be anything. (laughs) (laughs) Which I'm just laughing. But um, yeah, no, physician oversight is is a big part of it too right yeah. nurse working with the physician really well yeah having the social worker having the chaplain medications such a huge aspect uh-huh. getting medications covered um and uh and you know one other thought there is um 
with medications is that we do qu we do cover quite a bit, but medications also for comfort. Yes. Um, yes. And I was going to mention um, this may fall with the prior question, but one of the misconceptions in coming on service with hospice is also maybe I can't, uh, and this ties into medications. Maybe I can't see that provider uh, for a condition I had, whom I'd like to continue to see, mm -hmm. um, but hospice doesn't necessarily you'll come on for a diagnosis but for unrelated diagnoses you can actually still see another provider still mm -hmm. and you can also go to the hospital if you need to um, and not necessarily revoke hospice um, if it's an unrelated condition uh, if you're going to the hospital um, and so these are important things to know too, right? You mm -hmm. can revoke at any time. But I yeah. mentioned that because medications, you may be able to continue getting essential medications you need for an unrelated condition. Mm -hmm. So things um, are really assigned to hospice or kind of outside of hospice. Yeah. Um, and, but and, we provide and, a lot. But, and, and also um, hospice can help those patients navigate on changing medications and we we have done that a mm -hmm, lot mm -hmm. and depending where they are at in their trajectory uh we might be able to simplify a regimen i have seen you do that many mm -hmm, many times mm -hmm. um and having all those moving components that's what makes hospice services such a rich service Yes. Uh, one other thought with medications, just my mind's going with all that we're talking about. Um, absolutely. So I manage the medications and we make sure we're adjusting the medications. I may even manage a lot of times patients are satisfied enough with being on service and not having to go out anymore mm -hmm. uh, for hospitals or for other visits. They want to stay home and have things managed by us. And with that, we end up managing quite a bit of all sorts of conditions. And mm -hmm. I also manage quite aggressively if we need to do pain management. It might include drips. It might include all sorts of modalities to make sure that we're taking care of what we need to take care of. So, you know, it, it turns out to be quite a number of things that you're yeah. getting. As you said, DME, medications, a team devoted to you. Um, giving oversight, um, you know, a lot of things that you're getting with the hospice benefit. And I also wanted to mention about um, in that team, that team is, is, uh, is always communicating, mm -hmm. always communicating. Um, they, we don't live in silos. Um, the, the social worker, the chaplain, um, it is, uh, with the uh, talking with the doctor talking with the nurses it is a constant communication in order to support the patient and improve the quality of life because that's part of it this is not so much about uh the dying it's about living until you die yes and managing then when you are passing away exactly Ma managing that well perfect yes. thank you